All right. Hey guys, welcome. And today we have a guest, Dr. Genev Cadell. She's a licensed psychologist and relationship expert, especially for those of us that are entrepreneurs. And I am so glad you're here. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk with you all and I'm just thrilled to be here. Thank you. For those of you that are listening or watching, the reason why I invited Genev is because she really does have this expertise in understanding what building a business can do to your relationships and how to protect your relationship and have a wonderful relationship as an entrepreneur. And I want to first start out with how do you define a strong relationship, Genev? Well, so my background and training is, is really in, in terms of relationships is in Sue Johnson's emotionally focused therapy work. And mm -hmm. so that into, you know, I, I love being able to speak with therapists because lots of you understand what that is, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so, um, the, you know, what the, the latest research and science and um, what it's all found is that, you know, a strong relationship is really built on a healthy, safe and secure emotional bond. So when we feel like we can go to our partners, when we feel like we're there, they're there for us, when we feel like a priority and that we're, you know, important and that we can express needs to each other safely, that's really what the foundation of a strong and healthy relationship is. Yes. Awesome. And why do you see the influence of entrepreneurship on that kind of strong relationship? Um, what do you, what kinds of things do you see come up? Yeah, it's a great question. I apologize, I'm a little cough. It's all right. You know, a, a lot of times uh, our businesses can actually compete with our relationships because we have the same kind of emotional bond. I mean, if we're service-based entrepreneurs, certainly therapists, right? Um, we have the same kind of bond with our, with our business as we might with our partner. We feel excited and passionate and you know, yeah, you know, just really like in love with our businesses, right? And so there's a little bit of a threat that can happen when we don't pay attention um, to how much we might emotionally and, and you know, time-wise and everything else in our businesses. So that's kind of like the main thing that I found is that this business is like, you know, it's like another party. <laughs> right, exactly. So what are some of the biggest problems you see with couples in which one is the business owner and the other one is not, which is really what therapists typically have. It's sometimes I do see couples that are in practice together, but I'd mm -hmm. say it's not the norm. So what kinds of problems do you see? Yeah. Well, I think the, the one thing is that people just don't even pay attention to their relationships. They don't even, they don't even recognize that this is happening, that there is this third party in their relationship and they don't even, the, for the, the, the business owner, doesn't even recognize how big of an impact it's having. Um, and your partner might not pipe up about it. He or she may not even recognize it, but may just kind of, a lot of the times I see couple or individuals come in and they're like, my partner doesn't support me in business and da da da, and they're so nasty. And, mm -hmm. and, and if you look a little bit under the hood, you might find that your partner's actually, you know, misses you. Your partner's actually maybe a little jealous of the business. Maybe your partner is like, well, what do they need me for? They've got this business they're in love with. They've got these clients that they're in love mm. with, right? And especially as therapists, I mean, I know you're, none of you are falling in love with your clients, right? <laughs> but you do develop an emotional connection with your clients. You care about them. You think about them after you close the office door. And so um, that's one of the big things is that people don't even recognize the significance of the relationship that they have with their business and how it interferes with their relationship with their partner. Right. That's one of the issues I see. Mm -hmm. What do you um, think, can I ask just to springboard off of that, what if you do have a supportive partner? I think there's always this line of how much do you involve them in your business? Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think that's such a great question because um, with newer entrepreneurs, what I find is that they tend to – Get, I'm all about, so I'm all about supportive relationships. I'm all about, you know, when we're healthier and stronger in love, we're that much better at everything we do. However, business is a little bit different. And so a lot of the times with newer entrepreneurs, I find that they might seek validation from the wrong places, namely their partners, right? Uh, and so as, you know, starting a business is really all about personal growth. It, it challenges us in ways that 
I find, um, you know, just kind of putting your shingle out and having a therapy practice, that's one thing. But if you're really trying to kind of stretch out of your comfort zone and have a bigger impact, it can be really challenging. And you have to take risks and you have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. and so a lot of the times I see that um, people go to their partners for that affirmation. And while that's, you know, we do get that kind of validation from each other, and I, I'm all about that. Um, if there's something that you are insecure about, about your business, your partner may not be the best person to get right. that support from. Uh, especially if this business is this third party that you're not even aware is maybe taking you away from your relationship. Yeah, I think um, I agree with you. People go to their partner for things that they need to get maybe some coaching or, you know, some external source of support and knowledge in order for them to make the decisions. Because that adds a unique dynamic when you bring your partner in as the CFO or, <laughs> you know. Be careful, for sure. Yeah. Do you think, yeah. go ahead. No, 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 I was just going to say, you know, a lot of times we, you know, your part, I mean, depending on your relationship, obviously, um, many people are not married to business savvy spouses. Right? Yeah. And so you need a business coach or you need a mastermind partner or you need a community of entrepreneurs who get it. Your partner doesn't get it. There's, I mean, maybe they do, but for many of us, they're just cut from a different cloth. It's a special breed of people who want to start a business and really, you know, do that kind of thing. So, yeah. And what I love is that you work with all kinds of entrepreneurs, right? But being a therapist gives you an insider's knowledge of what do you think is different about being a therapist running a business? I mean, do we have some unique challenges, you think? I absolutely um, think so. What yeah. do you think those are? Uh, oh, gosh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just touch on a few. <laughs> Well, I think one of them is that, um, you know, this is true also for coaches and I, I work with a lot of coaches and that, um, that is that we really do have an emotional connection with our work in a way that, um, I think it goes a little bit deeper than some of the other types of entrepreneurs. And I, I don't want to say that, but there is a real person to person yeah. connection. And so, you know, with coaches and, you know, therapists, it's like we over deliver, we treat our clients like with, you know, like we care about them so much. We go above and beyond for them. Uh -huh. What do you do for your partner? Right? Yeah. Well, I like to tell my clients, you know, you've got to treat your partner better than your most VIP client that exists. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so, um, so that's one thing. I mean, it's just that emotional connection and that concern and that care. You know, if you're a good therapist, you care about your clients. Um, again, obviously you've got boundaries and you know, you know, I mean, but, but still you're, you know, you do have a very deep and intimate relationship with your clients. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing I think it really unique to therapists and other, some other service-based entrepreneurs like yoga teachers or more of the spiritual folks. Right. Um, the journey is a little bit, I think it's a, it's a, it's a long, it's a further journey for many of us when we're coming out of training, not charging for therapy, right? Doing internship and not getting paid. And so this whole money mindset, the, the growth or, along that is it's, I think it's a steeper path for many of us, yeah. right? Deeper learning curve than say, you know, someone who goes to business school and starts a marketing company and, you know, it's, it's a little bit easier to just kind of like do the money thing. And so in that sense, um, the growth is a lot, we do, we do a lot more growth and that can be also disarming to our partners mm -hmm. who are like, whoa, what's happening to, you know, my... I don't know, poverty mindset spouse. <laughs> I mean, it, it may not be that apparent, but um, the way we start thinking about money changes and that can also cause a big stress on a relationship depending on, you know, our partner's money mindset and how that's handled together. So that's another one I see, especially with therapists. So true. I'm trying to think back when um, Miranda and I started Zinni Me, you know, there was a big learning curve with that. And my husband's like, you work so hard, but where's the income? <laughs> and I'm like, it's going to come, I promise. <laughs> but it was, it was a probably steeper learning curve, you know, and uh, as a coach, having done things, I try to pass on those lessons so that people can avoid some of that steep, rocky climb, you know, um, you make really good points. What do you think about when you have a partner that's not so supportive that, you know, I see this a lot that in, um, especially in the people we coach, 
that maybe the partner was supportive, but they're getting frustrated and they're kind of like, okay, you've got to get a job or, you know, those kinds of things. What do you, what do you, yeah, there are, there are a couple different, there are a couple different angles that I like to take with that because it, it could depend on a number of different factors. The first, yeah. is, well, why is your partner not supportive? Is it because they don't feel like they're a priority? Is it because you're working 80 hours a week and not seeing them, right? Um, is it because you're working so much and not, and like the, the thing you bring up is about the money, right? And so sometimes, you know, our partners and our businesses, right? But our partners really are mirrors. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. And I've found sometimes that, um, you know, being able to have these difficult conversations with your partner about um, your business and, you know, sometimes your partner can be, can be right. Like, where's the money, right? And, and does that mean you need to step it up a little bit in business? If, if you're really giving your heart and soul, and this is, again, especially for therapists, because, look, I've been there. I've been, you know, <laughs> I've let bills go, and, you know, oh, I need my help. Oh, it's so easy for me. Oh, you know, like, we got to get out of that mindset and actually, you know, stand in our value and charge our worth. I'm sure this is what you help people with, right? Yeah. So important. Um, but your partner might have a point. I mean, is it because... Um, you know, they, they see your value in a way that you might not. That's another thing I'd like to ask. And so, you know, for you to really face these issues and, and see what they're mirroring back, that's another thing I like to encourage people as well. Yeah, that's really great. When you, when you think about in terms of like the communication piece, um, what kind of skills do you teach couples, especially as entrepreneurs? Yeah. Um, it's so funny because the entrepreneurial couples come to me and they're like, just give me skills. Just give me skills. I am here for coaching. Just tell me, you know, this is this. And it's never about communication skills per se. I mean, they help write tools. They say, give me tools, right? I want a toolbox. <laughs> tools are great. And you know, there's lots of them out there. I'm sure you guys all know. Them. Uh, but what really matters again is when you go back to that safe and secure emotional connection. And so the, what I like to teach people about comes straight out of Sue Johnson's work. If you guys haven't checked her out, Emotionally Focused Therapy, the best couples work out there. Um, it's been so researched, rigorously researched. Anyway, I'm not going to, this is not what this is. <laughs> <laughs> You're very passionate about EFT. That's awesome. All right. So her book, Hold Me Tight, Seven Conversations for a Lifetime of Love. In, in that, she talks about the ARE conversation. And basically when couples are fighting, when, when you're not seeing eye to eye on something, it's never about that thing. It's not even about the money. It's about whether or not you can answer the question affirmatively, are you there for me, right? And so what I like to help people with the foundation of is, is getting that piece down. And you can do that using the word or the acronym A-R-E. And so what that stands for is it's all about emotional A, accessibility. Are you there for each other? Are you, you know, can you can your partner reach you when they call, right? I mean, obviously, if you're in a, for the client, they can't reach you, right. and they know that, but if you're, you know, working on something business-related, are you accessible to them, right? That's really important. Are you there for each other? Can you turn to each other? The second one, R, is responsiveness, right? I'm sure you guys all have heard of the still face experiment that was done back in the day, right? If you don't, if you haven't seen it, YouTube it. It's terrible. It's a, um, you know, a, an a, one year old or so and, and the mother they're kind of engaged in this beautiful kind of like you know interchange and she's not mimicking him and they're going back and forth and then suddenly the mother's face goes still and the baby freaks out right and that's what we do to each other all the time when we're not responsive to our partners so responding to each other is so important our brains literally go into a primal panic when we can't get that give and take and then the last one is, is once you've got the accessibility and the responsiveness piece down, you've got to be emotionally engaged. So you've actually got to be present. I think so often we all get caught up in our business tasks and our to-do lists and things that we've got to, you know, all the stuff running in our minds, right? And it, this really comes down to being mindfully aware with each other and just being present. So, you know, you've got to be able to do this with each other and, and show your partner that they matter to you. And, and when they come to you, really be there, be available. I, I can't say enough about validation. If you guys are fighting, really stop and listen and validate. And, and that will take the sting out of any argument as well. Yeah. You know, it's easier said than done. Right. But those are some of the um, keys that I think we can all benefit from. And I think, too, for therapists or people that are in the healing work, you're tired. 
And we really have to be aware of that compassion fatigue piece uh, because that's what's going to really, when you come home after you've been listening to people for five sessions, eight sessions, you don't want to listen to your partner sometimes. <laughs> So I think it's about building a business that allows you to be healthy in your relationships at home, meaning that when you get home, you still have, you know, something to give and that you're open to receiving as well. So well put. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. And that does tie into to, um, to charging what you're worth as well. Because yeah. If you make enough money, you don't have to see 10 people back to back. What kind of therapy are you really doing? I mean, I've been there. Look, I've been there and I've been, you know, tired in session before. Yeah. We've got to take care of, we've got to take care of ourselves. And, yeah. and relationships are really just an extension of self-care. They're the best health insurance policy that they're out, that's out there. I mean, there's been all kinds of research that's been done around this. I love that. Yeah. You that's can't have a relationship true. if you don't have time. And if you're tired all the time and if you can't listen to your partner. Yeah. So good. So... What are some of the ways that you help entrepreneurs that are in relationships? Well, I think a, a lot of it is just about education mm -hmm. and educating you guys about, you know, this is what, this is what a healthy relationship looks like. This is what it's all about. Um, when a couple, sometimes, you know, I do see couples that hire me, you know, like VIP private couples that are in dire straits that are thinking, I can't do this, that are thinking I'm going to get divorced. And, you know, I take them through a sort of process that looks like EFT, but also adds components around the business, like setting boundaries, like you know, making sure you have time together. Time is such a big one. Um, you know, couples have come to me and like, we can't even schedule time for our sessions because they're traveling all the time. And so figuring out how to do that, how to stay connected when you do have busy lives. Mm -hmm. um, so really, <clears throat> it depends on the level of um, assistance that they need, right? So if, if somebody is on the brink of a divorce, well, then I would want to work with them privately. But other people just have this kind of pebble in their shoe, right? I like to use the pebble in the shoe analogy, right? <laughs> Kind of walk with it, it's fine, but then if you go a couple miles, you've got a torn up, ripped up, bloody foot, right? Uh -huh. so depending on where you are in that on that walk, uh -huh. <laughs> um, certainly just you know, getting educated around this. You know, I have some group group offerings and things like that, but you know, because um, it is especially you know, I found since joining more of the business land, it's so common that this is a big problem. And I think it's common amongst therapists. I don't want to, I just want to kind of dispel that myth that we are immune. I've talked to friends who, um, you know, they have perceptions about therapists. And I think sometimes we buy into that, that we have great relationships all the time. We know, you know, even like couples experts. Yeah. It's really, you know, it's so much easier sometimes to help others than to work through our own stuff. Totally. And I think that, you know, we are not immune to this. In fact, I think in some ways we're at higher risk for um, our relationships, kind of the scaffolding kind of crumbling a bit because of the intensity of our work, the emotional component of our work. And there is no shame in getting help. And for therapists too, um, especially when you're networking and you're connected, where do you go? And that's what I love about kind of your work, Genev, and doing coaching is that you don't live in their community. <laughs> no, I've, I've kind of gotten out of it. It's true. Yeah. You know, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And I have to say, like, if I hadn't learned EFT, right, yeah. if I hadn't learned the importance of a relationship, I would have, I would be in dire straits. I... I would work, I had a full-time job before I had kids. I had a full-time job. I was at a counseling center at a hospital. I was all over the place, right? And then I would have my pra practice at night. I would come home late. I'd be exhausted. My poor fiance at the time was alone. He had to, like, I'm feeling sad just even talking about this because he was like, this is not, this is not okay. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm doing it, right? So I had to make a change. Yeah. Yeah, I've had to make changes. And you know what hit me in the gut is when you said, treat your partner as much as, as well as you or better than your VIP client. And I'm like, Oh, I need to be doing some more, you know, there's still, <laughs> you know, you and me both. So, yeah. And, um, yeah. So 
if you are out there and you have struggled, you know, reach out for some support. And even if you're not at that point of struggling, look at your business and evaluate. I think, you know, look at what kinds of things you can put into place and safeguard. Do you have some ideas of what those safeguards might be, Jeanette? You mentioned like boundaries. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is important to think about. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. That's all right. Relationship with your business and setting your business up in such a way that supports your relationship, which includes boundaries. And, and, and with your relationship, you've got to make sure that you're actually spending time together. And if that means this is the most unsexy thing in the world, but if that means you have to put it in a calendar, I'm all for yeah. it. Sometimes if yeah. it's not a calendar, it doesn't happen. Right. Make it happen. Another thing that we often forget about, John Gottman, I'm sure you guys have all heard of him, he talks about the magic ratio, right? We need five times, a minimum of five times as much positive things to negative things. And we often take for granted the way we feel about our partners. And so you can never tell anybody enough that you care about them, that you love them, that you appreciate them. That's another thing. Um, you know, something that people have also found really helpful that I've worked with is the five love languages, right? Yes. Yeah not something I was ever taught in graduate school, but it makes sense. Know your partner's love languages, right? Know how they express and receive love and get on the same page with that so you can deliver your affection and love in a way that they'll receive, whether it's, I think, let me see if I can remember what they are, right? Whether, sure. it's, uh, whether it's touch or gifts or quality time or words of affirmation or acts of service, right? Mm -hmm. These are the, I'm sure there are others as well. One, somebody I work with is making music together, Right. I mean, there are lots of ways that you can do that, but really, you know, gratitude and appreciating what's working and just, you know, really turning up the positive feelings and paying attention to that and validation. And you know, again, it goes back to the ARE as well. So those are some, some things that you guys can all keep in mind. And just even if your partner isn't coming to you and talking about stuff, it doesn't Ooh that it's not happening right so really I really encourage you all to really evaluate your day-to-day -day life where your business fits in where your partner fits in and make sure there's some room for both yeah thank you so much I mean I think we're kind of both on a mission I'm all about we talk about having full practices and successful businesses but we also say we are here to have happy lives and that means beautiful connected relationships I can't imagine my life without my partner and I want the reason I went into business is to be more present you know to have more time with my daughter and my husband and so I think uh, you and I are kind of share that mission in helping people have really wonderful lives and that means balance and reaching out for help when we when we feel imbalanced as well so Thank you so much, Dinev. I really appreciate it. And I'm. how can people reach out to you if they want to learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, well, my website is mybestrelationship.com. You guys That's can also join me. Awesome Facebook. domain. <laughs> I have a free Facebook group that you guys can all join. If oh, cool. Like. It's called Thriving in Business and Love. And um, you can tag me in there if you have questions. I'm always available. Well, not always, but, you know, I'm, I'm there. That's another fun thing about being a coach is we don't have to, you know, <laughs> hide from people on Facebook. So find me there. I'm, I'm happy to help if anybody has questions or anything like that. That's where you can find me as well. Awesome. I'll put the links um, below this as well for people to be able to reach out. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much. This is so great. And guys, I love you guys. I love them. I was probably <laughs> contacting me for an interview about therapists, and I was just like, oh my gosh, please. I <laughs> love you guys and all the work that you're doing. So awesome. All right, guys, post below what has helped you have a great relationship as you've been building your business. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, please check out Jeanette. She's amazing. And I'm so honored that you gave us some of your time today. Oh, the honor's been mine. Thank you so much.